An active July continuing with rounds of severe weather, including more flooding potential for many throughout the week as a stalled out frontal boundary drapes across the United States, followed up by even more activity to the north. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful Tuesday. And uh, hopefully we're having an all right 8th of uh, July now. I know not that that has any real significance, unless maybe it's your birthday or something. But uh, trucking through July pretty quickly here, uh, it feels like it was just July 1st, and then somehow you blink and we're already a week through it. So uh, moving along pretty quickly. The weather, though, really not changing a whole lot. Unfortunately, we're continuing some of the more or some of the same problems, I should say, with flooding potential, heavy rainfalls, severe weather, and unfortunately, typical July stuff. The atmosphere is loaded out there with instability for storms and water for uh, plenty of heavy rain within those storms. And whenever they kind of sit over the same areas, yeah, unfortunately, we've run into problems. We've already had a very active flooding event so far this month. We obviously have had the devastating news out of Texas where uh, we've hit triple digit fatalities and again, just something you can't even imagine or want to think of. Um, and then we've had the flooding event in North Carolina over this past week and as Chantal moved through. Now, I'm not expecting anything to that magnitude this week. However, we want to keep you weather aware as, again, more flooding could potentially be something that we need to talk about. All right, folks, if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. So you're up to date again with this changing pattern. Uh, it's going to be an active one again throughout the week ahead. So you're going to want to definitely have the bell on so you're notified whenever I have new content out with more model data and a breakdown and analysis of that information. All right, let's dive on into things and take a look at our upper level water vapor loop. Uh, doing a good job at showing where the atmosphere is transporting storm systems right now. And we've got a couple areas to watch. We've got one area of storminess kind of working through the Midwest right now. That's going to slowly, and I do mean very slowly, work east over the next couple of days. And we're going to kind of get a bit of a stalled out frontal boundary. Now, it's not technically completely stalled. It's going to slowly move, uh, but it's going to, again, very slowly move eastbound uh, towards the eastern United States over the rest of this week ahead. And that's going to lead to multiple days of heavy thunderstorm potential uh, for a lot of folks in portions of the southeast and up into the mid-Atlantic. And that's where we'll need to watch for flooding potential with a pattern like this. Now, outside of that, big high pressure out west that is leading to storm systems up to the north in the northern stream. Uh, these are more compact storms. These are going to have higher severe weather potential. But luckily, we'll be moving a little bit quicker. That's going to ride again through the northern tier of the country and bring severe weather potential up there. So multiple areas to watch for stormy activity here on the horizon. Uh, with kind of what we're seeing out there now. Uh, let's take a look at current watches, warnings, advisories, and our radar. We do have heat advisories up for the PD of South Carolina from Florence all the way up the eastern seaboard uh, into uh, even portions of New Hampshire there for Dover, New Hampshire. So uh, we are going to see the heat in a pretty big way today. And um, then I think as we go through this week, we're going to lessen it uh, pretty significantly. Uh, I say significantly, it's not going to turn to fall weather or anything, but um, that will definitely be something that we look forward to. Unfortunately, what's going to lower the heat is the potential of uh, flooding. And in fact, you can see in the green here, we already have flood watches up for northern New Jersey, back down into portions of southeast PA and portions of Maryland. Uh, and this looks to even include the DC metro. So uh, again, flooding going to be a concern and we could even see it further south. We still have leftover flood warnings for a lot of rivers through Fayetteville into the Triangle of North Carolina. Again, all that runoff water from Chantal. We had more than 10 inches of rain in some places around Chapel Hill down towards Siler City. Really just much of central North Carolina getting hammered by that storm. Uh, again, bringing flooding. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a very action-packed uh, time frame here that we've had to watch out for. All right, let's switch on over now. Let's take a look at the upper level la uh, upper level map, rather. Uh, break this down a little bit more and then take a look at the severe weather outlooks for the days ahead. Well, we can see the setup in the upper levels for, again, kind of the dual threat that we're seeing. We've got the flooding potential, and then we've got the more impactful storm potential to the north. Well, for the flooding side of things, we got this trough kind of dipped over the eastern United States, and uh, you can see uh, here's the axis of it. That's acting as our forcing mechanism for these storms to fire up, and anything out in front of that, uh, that's where we're going to have the potential for those afternoon storms to become uh, even widespread numerous uh, by the time we get into the next couple of days. Uh, here into portions of the again, eastern United States. Now, on the flip side of that, on the northern uh, side of the country, we've got these pieces of energy rotating out of the Pacific. These are going to be our more compact, typical, stronger mid-level storm systems, and those are going to lead to higher and severe weather potential uh, up that way. And you can see how those are going to kind of rotate on through, again, uh, the northern tier of the country throughout the week ahead. So kind of a dual threat. We've got stalled out, slow-moving frontal systems in the east. We've got 
quicker moving, higher impact severe weather systems to the north. And again, that's leading to a pretty active severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. Now for today, we do have a slight risk up. That's a level two out of five actually in the mid-Atlantic. So today's going to be one of the days that uh, the severe weather threat might actually be higher in the east, plus the flooding threat. So kind of a one-two punch here uh, from Richmond all the way up to New York City, uh, seeing that uh, slight risk for severe weather and even a marginal risk from Boston all the way back down to Columbia and towards the Myrtle Beach and Florence area of South Carolina, including uh, really all the major metropolitan areas in North Carolina, Charlotte, the Triad, the Triangle, and even back down towards Fayetteville. Outside of that, in the kind of central part of the country, big area with potential of severe weather today. The good news is, uh, the tornado threat pretty low today across the board. Again, it's non-zero, meaning uh, not to say that there will not be a tornado today, but uh, it's not a major threat that we need to kind of dial in on. The wind threat going to be the biggest one today. Again, highest in that section of the mid-Atlantic where strong straight line winds could be a concern. And then per usual, the hail threat this time of the year are going to be more of a plains issue and not really much uh, here in the East Coast, although do not rule out some small hail, but likely nothing bigger than quarters out of today's setup. Now, tomorrow, that's whenever you kind of see the pattern settle in even more. We've got two areas. We've got the East Coast with that stalled out frontal boundary. Again, flooding and strong straight line winds with frequent lightning will be a concern. Back up into the Northern Plains, more of an all hazards type event begins to unfold and you don't see a tornado threat but again do not be surprised to see a couple tornadoes up into the northern plains tomorrow would not shock me at all and then that's going to get us to our thursday day three and you can really see that pattern begin to unfold still stalled off frontal boundary leading to a couple strong storms strong straight line winds frequent lightning down into the mid-atlantic and southeast the carolinas and virginia specifically and then you start to see severe weather chances bump up back up into the northern plains. So that's the kind of pattern that we're looking at. Let's, uh, let's take a look now at some mesoscale model data and kind of break this thread on down for you a little more in depth. Our high resolution rapid refresh model doing an all right job here of kind of showing that potential. Here's this afternoon. Uh, like we said, here's where the mid-level system is right now. The one that's going to impact the East Coast in a pretty big way. Still relatively far west, but you can see what it's doing. That's firing up storms. Uh, here out in front of it. And as we go ahead into time, that's today. You can even see those storms in the mid-Atlantic uh, with the uh, higher end straight line wind threat into the DMV, the Delmarva, up into even the southeastern PA and New Jersey. Further south from there into the Carolinas, again, could see a couple strong storms today. But see how widespread the storms start to get back out in the Mississippi River Valley? That's what's going to head east into the Carolinas, into the mid-Atlantic, and even portions of the northeast. Here we go by Wednesday afternoon. See the radar start to blossom from Georgia up into South Carolina. Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Virginia, up into, again, portions of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. These are slow-moving storms, a lot of rainfall in them, lightning, and again, some downburst potential. It's the heavy rainfall that we need to watch for. Again, even into central North Carolina, we've already got a saturated ground from Chantal. Portions of Virginia have a saturated ground. We've seen flooding in West Virginia this summer. Uh, so a lot of places already going to be more prone to flooding than maybe they would have been uh, beforehand. So we need to watch for that. And again, have a way to get watches and warnings, including flash flood warnings. And uh, I'll tell you firsthand, it's times like this when um, having a local meteorologist, a local TV meteorologist you follow, or the National Weather Service for your local office, it's so important to tune into them as well as uh, to what I do. I can give you the big picture here, but if you live in a specific town in West Virginia, uh, your local meteorologist, make sure you tune into what they're saying as well. And I think that's a key takeaway from what has happened uh, in Texas this past week. Um, it's more of a rural area. People like me, Ryan Hall, Max Velocity, whoever it may be. Uh, I mean, I didn't make a video of it uh, on the uh, flooding threat there. Obviously, I was also out of town for a little bit, but it's still, it's no excuse uh, from the big YouTube people who, again, might not get nitty gritty with every little town. Things go under our radar. You know, we're looking at the entire country. Only so many things um, that we kind of fit into these videos. So make sure you're following a local meteorologist as well, and uh, whatever market you may be in, somebody who's trustworthy and will get that information to the people uh, nearby. Because again, they've got a smaller area to work with. They're going to be way more fine-tuned with that forecast, and they're going to catch these little things like these uh, flooding events a lot easier. So uh, again, good to have multiple forms of information. That's kind of my spiel on that uh, for today. But again, you can see that uh, threat again on Wednesday, slow moving, widespread thunderstorm activity through portions of the southeast and mid-Atlantic. And then uh, the good news is this is relatively pulsy convection. So by the overnight hours, it dies down some. Uh, and then here we go by Thursday morning, you can see again, what's driving that slow moving frontal system is this very slow moving low pressure. 
and that front's still going to be draped back in here. So Thursday afternoon, expect more widespread thunderstorm activity into the mid-Atlantic. So uh, that's kind of what we're seeing there from that model. Now I'll zoom things out again, take a look at more of these ingredients. Let's look at the flooding threat, where we could see it, and a couple other things before I let you go on this Tuesday. Let's pick up where we left off here. It's Thursday afternoon, and yeah, folks, you notice more of the same widespread thunderstorm activity into the Carolinas, into Virginia, back down into portions of just the southeast in general here. Like we've mentioned, slow moving, a lot of water in the atmosphere for these things to ring out, frequent lightning and strong winds as well. Now, that's one area to watch, and that even extends up into the northeast, I would even say. Um, but then back into the plains, we've got a more defined low pressure system. This is that day three outlook. Notice not as widespread convection into the Midwest, but we're going to have more wind shear. We're going to have more surface energy out that way. So I think the severe weather threat going to be higher into the plains there by Thursday, at least a portion of the plains. You can even see that turns into a bit of a squall line there by overnight Thursday into Friday, according to our European model. And here's Friday afternoon, another day more of the same. We've got two threats, the Midwest. We've got uh, more of a severe weather threat and yeah, could see some flooding and then more of a slow moving storm threat into the Southeast where uh, we'll have to watch for excessive rainfall to begin to pile up. So that's through the end of the work week. By the weekend, uh, here we go, Saturday, uh, still that leftover storm into the Midwest, trying to push east, and I think hopefully going to clear the pattern for a lot of us by the weekend. I think Saturday and Sunday, lower rainfall chances in the Mid-Atlantic. Still, again, could see rain, but not as bad, I think, as Wednesday through Friday. Uh, this is Saturday. You can see, again, here's that storm system moving through the Midwest, pulling all the way up into Canada, but a frontal system trying to drape down with it. Hopefully that'll kind of clear out some of the moisture in the atmosphere that's still left over from that stalled frontal boundary uh, prior to that. And then after that, you know, we'll see what's uh, next in the cards. We'll start to get about a week or so out. So we'll uh, save that for another time. What about uh, the severe weather potential? This is a supercell composite. And again, notice ingredients for higher in severe weather supercell is going to really maintain the, the, the northern plains in the Midwest. The southeast, yeah, we'll get severe weather, but it's going to be your typical downburst energy, a lot of lightning, things like that. Not really going to run into the hail or the tornado threat that maybe we could maintain back out into the plains. I'll tell you, normally by July, things start to shut off out here. Not this year. I don't know what uh, uh, what's going on out there, but uh, they're just keeping it going here into the summer months. So you can see that. I think hopefully, though, by this weekend, uh, even the supercell threat will die down a little bit as that front, again, works on through, clears us out a little bit. And we should hopefully get uh, some nicer conditions in behind it. Now, let's talk about the flooding potential. Um, yeah, excessive rainfall is going to be a concern. This is the next seven days or so. And in fact, if I drop it down to the next five days, you notice the map does not change a lot. So let's do that. Uh, now, how much rain are we talking? Well, the heaviest totals, again, going to be from, uh, I think, North Carolina up through the Mid-Atlantic, Virginia, uh, into the Delmarva region, the DMV, up into the southeastern portions of PA, into New Jersey. Areas in there could see a widespread, you know, two to four inches. Isolated spots, six plus inches. I think easily somebody's going to get half a foot to a foot of rain over the next, um, you know, now through the end of this work week, we'll call it. Uh, and that's obviously enough to cause flash flooding potential. And unfortunately, we cannot pinpoint exactly what towns are going to see it. Again, that's why it's important to keep up with your local meteorologist, tune into maybe their evening or overnight newscast, get uh, those NWS alerts, um, have an easy way to get those, and uh, you know, so on and so forth, because it could sneak up on anybody with these summertime patterns. It's funny, everyone always says, you know, meteorologists are so bad at forecasting hurricanes or snow. Relatively speaking, we're pretty good at that. It's the summertime, actually. That's kind of the hardest month, I would say, to forecast the weather, uh, just because uh, everything is so mesoscale. It's such a... Um, happening on a small scale uh, kind of thing like we saw in Texas that was not one storm or anything. It was just a mesoscale accident, as we call it, where over and over again, the same areas get bad weather. And uh, again, that's one of those things you kind of have to now cast a little bit. So because of that heavy rain, this could lead to excessive rainfall that could lead to flooding potential. Here's today, slight risk of flooding uh, up into much of the Northeast. Again, we got some concrete jungles up here. Uh, we've got uh, some heavy rain from that slow moving boundary today. We'll watch that. Even a little area out here into the Ozarks and into southeastern Oklahoma. That's today. What about tomorrow? Uh, and now is when the mid-Atlantic really starts to shine, unfortunately. Again, you can see that excessive rainfall outlook. Uh, it's a slight risk. It's a level two out of four, so not off the charts. But again, it only takes you know one mesoscale accident, as I said, uh, from New Jersey all the way back down into the Charlotte area. Could see excessive rainfall there for your day two. That's your Wednesday. Then we get into your Thursday, and uh, we got kind of a couple bullseyes. One over here into North Carolina, right where we just had the flooding from Chantal, same area, saturated ground, heavy rainfall. That's a recipe for more flooding, unfortunately, and then back out into the Midwest. 
some of those complexes of storms as well. So watching that it could definitely be something that we need to keep an eye on. All right, let's take a look at a couple more things, including temperatures, humidity, and one final look at the tropics before we let you go. Well, the muggy meter going nowhere, it's uh, going to start to get back up into oppressive levels. Now, today, actually, not terrible for some of us. It's going to be a select few that get it nice, but notice this little pocket of dry air down in the southeast. Charlotte, Asheville, Greenville, Spartanburg, all the way back down to Atlanta. Uh, it's not nice per se, but it sure is pretty nice for July. Uh, Chantal moved away, brought some dry air in behind that storm and has led to some nicer conditions. Now, if you're in the coastline, uh, not so much. And that's why we have the heat advisories out here. You've got the high uh, heat and the high uh, muggy meter, that's going to lead to heat index values pretty high. It's muggy into the Southern Plains, not terrible into the Ohio Valley in the interior Northeast today. Uh, but I will caution everybody, uh, yeah, the heat and humidity is going to return probably in a big way. Here we go by tomorrow afternoon, a lot more of us seeing those purplish colors. Still not terrible in the interior Northeast and even up into uh, in the UP of Michigan, Northern Wisconsin and Northern uh, Minnesota and obviously not bad out into the Rockies where we just don't have the moisture source that we have in the East. Uh, keep it going though. Yeah, folks, you kind of get the idea. It stays pretty muggy. Now that uh, system into the Midwest I told you about, that'll bring a bit of a frontal system with a shot of drier air for some. And you'll notice that here by uh, Saturday into Sunday, we've got some nicer pockets of air up into the Midwest, uh, but elsewhere again, remaining pretty muggy. And then I think the humidity returns in a big way anyway. Although you again, see at times it tries to get beaten down a little bit by this Northern stream energy, but relatively speaking, uh, looks pretty humid. Now, what about temperatures? Honestly, about average for many of us. You see how we've got a lot of pockets of orange and red and uh, a blue. That tells me it's going to be pretty normal July temperatures. Now, obviously, today, heat advisories in the east. Today is kind of the last two raw, though. It's kind of a miniature heat wave, if you will, yesterday and today for many of us. By the middle of this week with rising rain chances, uh, yeah, here's tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, plenty of pockets of different colors. That tells me it's going to depend. If you get rain, it might not be that bad of a day, although it's going to start hot for everybody before the rain gets going. And then by the afternoon, if you, again, don't see any rain yet, you're going to be scorching pretty good. It's going to feel pretty humid. But uh, it's definitely uh, the theme I see for at least the next five days or so. It's just that general typical type of temperatures. Final thing we'll talk about here is a look at the tropics. Is there anything concerning out there that I see? And I'll be honest with you, not really. Now, there's a couple areas of thunderstorm activity. We've got this area over the Bahamas. You could even kind of count this area down into the Caribbean with it. Not overly concerned about that. Again, this is water vapor loop, and the reason we're not overly concerned about the Atlantic right now is I'll kind of move this, uh, let's see if it loads, we'll move this off to the side so you can see a look at the um, main basin here. Uh, all of this is dry air that we're kind of watching out here. So the Sahara dust keeping things at bay into the main development region for now. We've got some wind shear still out there, uh, and normally it doesn't really get going out there till you know August or so, so it's not untypical for us to still be quiet at this point, although last year uh, with uh, Hurricane Barrel, it was, I believe, you know, a bit of an anomaly there, but uh, yeah, I don't see anything at least the next five days, I'll call it. Maybe after that, we'll see, uh, but uh, we'll definitely start adding these daily looks uh, at the tropics here in the videos. All right, folks, so that's all I got for you. Again, flooding potential is my main concern over the next couple of days. We're going to have some severe weather on top of it, but uh, flooding will be the main threat. All right, have a great one. Stay safe, and I'll see you all tomorrow.